Hi everyone, this is Sherry Rice-Smith of EFTforChristians.com. Um, I want to do a part two uh, around aspects. Um, I just hope that I can really um, kind of drill this into everyone's head about what we're talking about here. So again, aspects are details or pieces of a memory or an event that hold and cement the core issue, the true belief in your heart of what you think um, you know, around life. There's events and perceptions that we pick up as kids. And these are, are really grounded in um, these small aspects of things that, that went, around, went ar on around some particular memory. Um, they're the sensory uh, pieces that remind us of what's going on. And then they continue to play in the back of our heads for the rest of our lives, um, causing us to um, you know, have a specific belief about ourselves or about people in situations, situations around us. Um, the core issue tends to be what we consider a tabletop. I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to draw you a little picture here in a second and show you what I'm talking about. Um, the events or the memories that hold up that table, we call them legs. Um, and then the aspects, once again, this is an illustration of what I'm trying to explain here, are the little um, details that hold that leg up. So maybe you can see my little drawing here. So um, excuse my artwork, but that's okay. So the core issue is your tabletop. And that tabletop can be things like, I'm not lovable. Um, I don't deserve, I'm not good enough, um, anything, any, any kind of an I am statement tends to be a tabletop. It's something that you have, it's a belief about yourself that you have picked up um, because of events or things that were said to you mostly in childhood. And, and you just now believe that's the way it is. So again, there's the four legs to the table, um, a, a specific memory or an event is a leg. There can be multiple legs under here. You can have hundreds of legs that hold up a core issue or a belief. And then the aspects are these little feathery things that I threw in there. And that's the what flushes out this memory or an event. This the sensory stuff that makes this all true. I hope that makes some sense. Okay, let me give you a, um, another example. And I'll just make one up and pretend this was me. So I was 13 years old and um, it was a hot summer day. And we were all of us neighbor kids, a whole pile of us were going to ride our bikes, you know, a mile and a half to the, the community pool and just, you know, chill out in the pool all day, get cooled off and get some exercise. So we had everything packed up and all of a sudden I realized uh, my younger sister had taken off. Her and her friends, off they went. They left me behind. No one even seemed to notice that I was missing and that was it. So I got, I was sad. So I just packed up and uh, started pouting, I'm sure, and went home and, uh, you know, tattled to my mom that, you know, my sister left me and it's like, I'm really upset. So I was kind of a little bit, you know, gleeful because mom looked a little perturbed about the whole thing. I don't know. And whether she was perturbed that my sister left or whether she was perturbed that she didn't have an empty house to get all the cleaning done. Can't tell you that. Don't remember. But, you know, my perception was his mom was perturbed. <clears throat> so I anticipated for once, oh, goody, I'm not the one going to get yelled at. It's my sister who's going to get yelled at. And I couldn't wait for her to come home and mom to lambaste and jump into her about, you know, how dare she leave me behind and she shouldn't have done that and na da na da da. And mom did start that once my sister could, came home. But all of a sudden, that whole thing changed into a comment that went something like, well, I thought you were the nice sister, meaning my, my, meaning my younger sister. You were the nice sister, and I can't believe, you know, you did this. And so suddenly my glee and my thought of, oh, goody, I'm going to be the good one this time, turned into, oh, no, mom likes my sister better than me. And now I have this horrible feeling in my stomach that this whole thing backfired on me, and now it just reinforced to me in my head 
that I mom, mom liked my sister better and I really wasn't all that loved. So how would that look like if we tap that? So you could begin with, um, even though my sister left me and they jumped on their bikes and I was planning on going to the pool with, um, with the gals, you know, I was really mad at my sister because she left me behind. And then even that, uh, I know God loves me and therefore I love and accept myself. And you could tap through that. I'm mad at my sister. I'm mad at my sister. You know, she took off on her blue bike. She left me behind. There were six of them. All the neighbor kids, they left me behind. I was so mad. I was so mad. Um, and then that suds may drop and it could be high. It could be low. And then you realize way in the depth of the core of your being, you really hate your sister. Well, here's a beautiful opportunity, beautiful opportunity as a Christian to, to admit that you really do hate your sister. Because, you know, this was one incident, but there's been hundreds where you always thought she was the favored one and she, and, you know, it looked like mom liked her better and mom gave her special privileges that you, as the older sibling, never got. And you actually realize you hate your sister's guts. And so go ahead while tapping. Allow yourself to feel that. Admit to yourself that you really do hate your sister. And... Part of this is, you know what? God already knows you hate your sister. So why do you think you walk around and we Christians do this all the time of, oh, I'm not allowed to hate so-and-so. Well, guess what? You hate them anyway. So stop denying the fact that you do. Admit that you do. God already knows that you do. He sees your heart. He knows your intentions. And take this opportunity to repent and confess. And I would do that while I tap. And here's what that would look like. Oh Lord, I am so sorry. And even though I hate my sister because she's done this and that and every other thing to me, I know that you love me and I ask that you forgive me of this sin and remove this hatred from my heart because I know that I need to love my sister just as I love myself. And go ahead and let it alone. And just confess it. Now God has forgiven you immediately. He's forgotten the sin. It's gone. I think that's Psalm 103. It, you know, he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. Get that out of the way. Because until you fix the vertical relationship with your heavenly father, you're never going to fix any of these horizontal ones that we have with each other. Allow the Holy Spirit to work that forgiveness in your heart. Now, Obviously, I said sister, and let's hope you don't hate your sister or your brother or you don't hate anybody. But you know, there's times when we've just been mistreated and those perceptions are so thick and deep. And you know what? We just have all this animosity in our heart and it's all against the fifth commandment. So just confess it and move it along. Now, you can go down through that and, you know, you can be mad at your neighbor because they left you. And then you can be bad at, mad at your mom because she didn't punish your sister. And then you can be sad because your mom said, you know, whatever she said to your sister about she was a nice sister and you weren't. Whatever perceptions, you clear that all out. And what comes, those are all uh, legs and aspects to the core issue of no one loves me. And that may be your core issue. I don't deserve to be loved. No one loves me. Um, I'm not important enough. I'm not worthy or good enough to be loved. Any type of thing. And that's where we can change a ton of those perceptions and beliefs that we built up as kids by finding those legs that hold up the core issues and tapping on all the aspects of the memories uh, and, the, and those legs and the events. And then you will watch God change your life because that belief is no longer running in your subconscious and it's no longer controlling your thought process and it's no longer co controlling your life. All right. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Again, remember EFT is not a substitute for any type of medical care, so please consult your own physician for that should you have need for it. Um, email me at eftforchristians at gmail.com. 
with questions about this video or any other video or any other question that I haven't even addressed on a video and visit eftforchristians.com hit my resource page check stuff out come visit me in Milwaukee let me teach this to you and uh, then go out and let's uh, heal the world go grab them for Jesus all right God bless you let's talk another day bye-bye